Hello there, my name's Chris. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And the purpose of this video, well, there's two purposes. Uh, first, I just want to introduce you all to 2024. Welcome to anyone watching this for the first time, and welcome back to all the subscribers who stuck through me through thick and thin, particularly last year, was a bit of a, a write-off. So, the second part of, the second reason for this video is I want to do a new format for this year, and I'm doing a revamp of the channel. So, you may have noticed, I'll put the logo up here, I'm changing the channel name. So it's no longer Becker's Models, it's Becker's Model Aircraft. Focus is going to be on aircraft from now on. Now the reason I'm doing that is, well, that's where my passion lies. I love model aircraft. I love getting them actually in the air. That makes me a little bit different from all the other guys out there who do them on the ground, which is fine. Now, I'm only sharing my models on YouTube from now on. I've stopped doing Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the other social media. Too toxic for me, too much of a waste of time. So I'm leaving that aside. I'm only doing it here on my channel. Now the format I'm proposing to use this year is weekly or fortnightly, maybe monthly when things get a little bit too busy, you know, life takes over from modeling. What I want to do is share with you two major projects I hope to get done this year, and I'll discuss them very shortly. And a few other little things that I'm working on, things I want to finish, a couple of little new things I want to start. But also I want to talk about our great hobby. I want to talk about, you know, kits that I've bought, give you a little preview, show them. I've got a couple to show you today. I want to talk about the kits that are coming up, some new ideas that are out there, some techniques that I've seen, and also I want to share some models that I've actually seen in, you know, since that last episode. And finally, I want to get you to come on my journey with me into trying to use 3D printing to really make models, aircraft models, in flight. So I'm developing new flight stands, I'm developing modifications to the actual kit, so wheels up, uh, I might even start making my own pilots, that sort of thing. So that's going to be a long journey, and I want to share that here with you. So, without further ado, let's get into the videos, and I'll see you at the end as well. So the first thing to talk about is I have started the Felix Stowe. Yes, I reviewed this kit uh, last year, or year before last, and I've been wanting to do a, uh, a Felix Stowe flying boat for years. It's always been on my wish list. I remember saying when I was active on Facebook, oh, I'm going to start this in 2022. It's going to be my 2022 builder, then 2023, and then... Uh. So, I have started it, and I was inspired by Plasmo. Um, David over there at Plasmo, the, you know, the greatest, pretty much the biggest YouTube channel out there, he's built this exact kit, so it got me inspired. It's the one with the, the singular modification of the, the upper gunner there, and I'm like, yes, I've got to get into it. I really want to do it. So, I've started it. So, here it is. Uh, yeah, that's the outside, and um, that's the inside. Um, can you kind of tell it's not actually... Yeah. Um, I didn't start the rodent, okay? The rodent is unblemished. Oh, there's a few parts out of there, but there it is, okay? So, <laughs> I've actually started, and I've built the interior of... As my pump goes on. This is the 132 wing nut wings. This is the one I really wanted to do. Uh, so let's just put this aside and I'll show you very quickly the size of this thing. So yes, look at it. It's massive. Yes, Penny. She's hooking something up there in the background. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> so yeah, I've started the wing nut wings and this thing is, um, you know, quite amazing. Uh, I've dry fitted everything. It's all ready to be painted. The full interior is ready to go. I've, I've built up the hull as well because as you can see, it's just taped on at the moment. Uh, but the two halves are ready to go. I have to, because I'm just going to paint it all at the same time. You know, the inside is going to be timber or wooden. Built up the trolley, which I'm not going to use because it's going to be <coughs> in flight. Yes, it is. Um, so that's just, that's just to hold it, which is great. Fantastic kit. I have found a couple of little problems with it. Uh, a couple of little things I don't like, but, and the, the fit, and I've heard about this before. I've got a few builds. Uh, I'll just tighten on this so you can see. There's a, a bit, a bit of, some of these panels don't fit that terribly well. They need a little bit of, like a tiny bit of filler. And I think there's going to be a couple of minor issues on the, the lower hole there. This need to be filled up. Um, but generally, and hopefully that, I haven't even tried putting this inside, um, inside here, but these parts just fit. They're all just dry fitted on, uh, the side pieces there. Like I said, I've just got some tape on. Uh, I have got these, I have what, what took probably the longest 
and I'm not, I haven't shown it in here is the seat for the pilots. Um, I'm going to have a full crew in this. I'm going to have, well not full, I'm going to have about five crew members and I'm using a combination of uh, the mainly all Copper State model figures. So I'll have a, a seated front gunner, pilot, co-pilot, have an engineer at the back standing up in the in the, the rear area here or maybe there, I don't know. And then of course I need to have the upper gunner. So the, the major modification I'm doing this, I have yet to see anybody make this, is I'm doing the wingnut wings with the upper gunner. Um, portal. Now I've got some really good high class photos, I'll see if I can remember to put them up here, of uh, someone um, standing in it. And there is a photo of this flying, it, it, it did actually fly with the gunner in there. Uh, so it wasn't just a one off, hey we'll just give it a go and that's the end of it. No, they actually did use it uh, to give, make it a bit of a flying fortress. And luckily the late, this is the late wing not wings Felix though, luckily it has the parts necessary because uh, I need an extra set of guns. So. This late has a double scarf ring at the front, two Lewis machine guns, and then a single small scarf ring at the rear. Because the kit actually includes some early lates, <laughs> this piece um, is actually another single scarf ring. So that is what I'll use for the upper, uh, and there's enough machine guns for the upper uh, for the upper gun mount. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. But uh, as I said, I'm doing three projects at once. And so once this is painted and I've got this, um, the internals inside there, all glued up, ready to go, ready for primer. I'm going to put it aside and then move to the, um, the, the next project. So, uh, or I might do the two things at once, I'm not sure. But this kit lends itself to doing, doing a bit, or a lot, and then putting it aside because the next sub-assembly on this to do is the engines. Uh, so that can be, do the interior, put it aside, and then detail, detail up the engines, and then do the wings, do the rigging, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be a very long-term project, so um, yeah, let's go on and look at the next thing. First of all, little interruption. <laughs> uh, look, I'm gonna try to make these videos short as possible, 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the outside, because there's nothing more than I hate sitting down to watch a video and you know, you invest all that time and energy into watching something, as opposed to a podcast. I'll sometimes have my podcast running uh, while I'm modeling and that's great because you don't need to watch it you just need to listen but if you're going to watch something and invest the time it's got to be worthwhile and for me my threshold my personal threshold is 10 to 15 minutes oh yeah I'll put on a I'll put on a cup of coffee or I'll sit down with a drink and 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 sit down and watch it or maybe I'll do some modeling and lift my head up every five minutes to see what the hell that guy's going on about anyway long story short Little interlude, this is a Tamiya Bowfighter. No, I didn't build it. Uh, I bought this, it's a paint mill, basically. <laughs> Some guy built it uh, online on eBay. I picked it up, I think 10 bucks plus shipping, so it's like $20, you know, half the price of the kit. Fantastic for a paint mill. Uh, it's been thrown together. It's even been done wheels up, which uh, I didn't know you could do that with this Bowfighter, and it actually looks pretty good, so I might actually buy myself one, because um, I love this this aircraft, fantastic. Uh, attack aircraft for World War II, uh, but, but paint mules, paint mules are great because uh, this is something I'll, I can just have off the side of the bench and I'm like, oh, I really want to try, you know, a certain paint scheme or a certain colors, do they clash or whatever, and sometimes it's better to use a real model, one of a better word, uh, with panel lines and features and so forth, so you can get an idea, and also, you know, you've done a mix, you've mixed up some paint, and you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work, grab out your paint mule, lay it down and go, oh no, it's too thick, or oh no, it's too thin, whatever. That's what they're great for. So um, I literally have a massive box full of these. So, uh, you know, they're really, really handy. I really enjoy paint mules. Some people don't use them at all. I don't know why, but you know, there's more than one hobby. Talking about that, let's have a quick look at some kits that I've bought recently, just to break this video up. Um, yeah, look at this, A model, Beechcraft Starship. This is one of Bert Rutan's really weird and wonderful, but gorgeous aircraft designs. And I've been telling myself, um, it's usually my, my wife giving me the uh, inspiration, hey, do more civilian stuff, Chris. You know, don't just do things that bomb the hell out of people or shoot down stuff. Let's do some civilian things. So, saw this and I was really skeptical to go buy one. I mean, I really don't trust online reviews <laughs> that much, um, particularly just out of the box reviews. And I have built an A model kit before. I've built another Burt Rutan, Spaceship One. And it turned into a, um, a flying aircraft because I literally threw it against a wall. It was that exasperating to build. And I just, uh, and I think I stepped on it about 400 times. It was just crap. But this looks on first glance to be a bit better. Um, all the parts are in one bag, of course, but they look a lot. I won't get them out. If you want me to do a little review on this, I can. But like I said, there's really 
no point. You really need to build it to get an understanding of what's going on. But this actually looks a lot better. A model, they're on this end of the spectrum. Bandai Tamiya are on this end of the spectrum. So that gives you an idea of the quality. They do short run stuff. They do quirky stuff and I salute them for that because not everyone wants to build yet another P51. And speaking about civilian stuff and speaking about airfix, because you know they're sort of in the middle there in terms of uh, quality. This is one of their classic vintage repops, and so I know what I'm going in for with this one, the Hanley Page Heracles. Uh, and I'm gonna be real careful that Harry doesn't watch this, Harry Houdini, or Houdini models. Don't watch this, Harry, because you'll wanna buy this. Okay, this is an old, old kit, so this is, you know, and it's been done, I mean, look at the chunky uh, <laughs> attachment points to the sprue, but it's got modern decals, modern instructions. Uh, I've seen quite a few builds of this, and I just, I just love it. I just love how the fact that it's an old school, interwar plane, you know, give it a go, just do it out of the box, add a little bit of rigging, uh, and I believe most people don't even build the interior and just, just you know, yeah. I mean, just a fun interwar sort of plane. I love this this sort of era. Um, so anyway, back to your regular programming, and I think this video will end a bit quick, quickly, but um, at the end of the next section, but yeah, there you go. So of course the Academy CH-53E, I have been building this thing for years. I got stalled last year and I decided to put this away and get concentrating on building about six or seven or 12, or I can't remember how many other aircraft kits I went into. And I got stalled out here at the, um, the road ahead. So I did, uh, did quite a lot of work on that road ahead. And yeah, I actually had, had wired it once, didn't like it, started again. Now, the reason why I wanna get back into this is very simple. I really wanna get this finished. It's been so long. Once I can get this done, <laughs> I'll be ecstatic. What's really inspired me with this is uh, John Bryan of, um, I can always pronounce your name wrong, John, sorry, Bryan? Yeah, John Bryan. Um, uh, he's doing this build as well, and he's doing a similar attempt to what I'm doing. He's uh, adding rivets, for example. Um, he's, he's, almost, he's almost got the aircraft complete, the helicopter complete. Uh, you know, he's, he's done like I've done. He's added uh, rivets on, on a lot of the areas. I've only done the tail and um, some of the, the bits at the back. My next job to do after I do the rotor is I need to do the sponsons. So I've added the um, uh, the extra sensors and things that need doing, uh, but there's no there's no rivet detail there, so they need to be added on. And then I can do the um, the, the non-slip walkways as well. And then after that, I really need to get into this. Is where my builds are slightly different from John's. Um, hang on, there's some some rotors. That's oop, getting a bit glary there. The, uh, the humidity is uh, really dicing with the camera there. It doesn't like, it's almost 100% humidity here at the moment. So let me just get this set up. So if you follow my, I've got a build series, you can follow it there or, but from now on, I'll pretty much just show you here uh, what I'm doing. So that's the interior pieces. That's the roof, the two sides. That's what it looks like, <coughs> excuse me. Going at the back there, that's the, the ramp it goes up like that. So you can see quite a bit in there. Uh, I do need to add obviously the seats and everything else in here and a, and a few other details. Um, so yeah, I've started on the back of the cockpit. So that's what it looks like on the back, going up to the ceiling. I need to start on the front of the cockpit and I've watching another chap's build and he's doing something similar to me, which is after I paint this, I'll then be adding wire, uh, white wires using easy line. Um, because there's so many cables in here. So that's the next thing I need to do is, because I'm really uh, doing putting a lot of effort into the interior, even though you really don't see it, I will have the ramp fully down, I'll have the door open on the side, and I still am going to put an LED or two or three inside so you can actually see uh, illum illuminated. But the effort is actually gonna be on the outside because I really wanna do stress skin with this one. We'll see if I can do that because putting these bloody rivets on is such a pain, um, but you know, worth it in the end because, you know, this thing is just, this particular helicopter is just renowned for having a bazillion of rivets on it. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed first episode of 2024, the two major projects, the Felix Stowe, the Super Shitter, CH-53E for those of you for the PC term. Uh, <laughs> they're underway. I hope to have more on uh, episode two, which will be in another week or two, I hope. And uh, yeah, so I hope you like the new format, the new channel name, the revamp, everything else. And if you've stuck all the way through, thank you very much. I'll catch you next time.